those students today we're going to continue with our hormone actions we've covered the action of the hydrophobic hormones in the next two lectures we'll cover the actions of the hydrophilic hormones there are two prevailing mechanisms that the hydrophilic hormones use to exert their effect on the target cell one of them is the adenylate cyclase pathway and the other one is the phospholipase pathway and so in this lecture we'll cover the adenylate cyclase pathway first we're going to draw a cell let's start with our target cell okay this is our target cell and in the target cell we're going to have our receptor for the hormone so let's indicate that here here we have our receptor for the target hormone now let's indicate the hormone itself and here we have our hormone. Inside the cell, we're going to have a protein which interacts with the receptor. This protein is linked to GDP. This is the sequence of events so far. The first thing that happens is that the hormone binds to the receptor. When the hormone binds to the receptor, this activates the receptor. This activated receptor activates the protein that's associated with GDP and converts the GDP to GTP. The GDP is converted to GTP, making this protein active. Now this protein can go on to activate yet another protein, and we'll indicate that protein here. The GTP-associated protein then moves to this new protein to activate it. So now this new protein is activated. Now this protein is an enzyme, so it's going to convert ATP to cyclic AMP. So let's indicate that here. Now, in this single transduction pathway, cyclic AMP is very important. Or in this pathway, this adenylate cyclase pathway, cyclic AMP is very important. Okay, we'll go back. Let's just indicate a few things here to make things simpler. Indicated here is our hormone. Since the hormone brings the signal to the target cell, we call the hormone the first messenger. And the protein which the hormone attaches to, of course, is the receptor. So let's indicate that here. So if our hormone is our first messenger, some molecule within the cell is going to be our second messenger. And let's identify our second messenger. The GDP-associated protein is going to be activated by the addition of GTP. It's not the second messenger. This enzyme, which is activated by the GTP-associated protein, this enzyme is called adenylate cyclase. This is the enzyme for which the pathway is named. So adenylate cyclase is an enzyme, so it's not the second messenger. Adenylate cyclase converts ATP into cyclic AMP, or CAMP. So cyclic AMP is our second messenger. So let's highlight it here. Over here. Second. Our second messenger is cyclic AMP. Okay, let us continue. Cyclic AMP activates another protein. Cyclic AMP converts this inactive protein into an active form. So that's indicated here. This active protein is a special type of protein. And what it's going to do is it's going to continue. It's going to continue in this pathway by converting an inactive enzyme into an active enzyme. And so let's indicate that here. Here we have our blue active protein. And this is a special protein. What it actually does is adds a phosphate to the inactive enzyme to convert it to an active enzyme. So let's indicate that here. The act of phosphorylating the inactive enzyme activates it. So there's a special name given to proteins which add a phosphate to other proteins, or add a phosphate to other substances. We call these kinases. And so the protein here is a kinase. Now we make it to our active enzyme. What happens with the active enzyme? The active enzyme actually converts a cellular substrate to a product. So let's indicate that here. Now our cellular substrate has been converted into a product. It is this product that leads to the physiological response, and we'll indicate that here. And now we have our physiological response. So let's go through all of the steps. The first thing that happens is that our hormone, which is the first messenger, binds to the receptor. This activates the receptor. The GDP-associated protein is then activated by exchanging GDP for GTP. The GTP-associated protein then goes on to activate adenylate cyclase. The adenylate cyclase, now activated, converts ATP into the second messenger, cyclic AMP, or CAMP. The cyclic AMP then activates an active protein to an active form. This is going to be an active kinase to an active kinase. Kinases phosphorylate proteins or other substances. So the activated kinase is then going to activate and phosphorylate an inactive enzyme to an active form. So the active enzyme now has a phosphate associated with it, making it active. The active enzyme then converts a cellular substrate into a product. And this product is what leads to the physiological response. So this is how hormone actually binds to the outside of the cell and transmits its signal to the inside to give a physiological response. There are two other points I want to mention about this pathway and these pathways in general where the hormone binds to the outside. The first one is amplification. So you want to think about it like this. There may be one hormone which binds to one receptor. That activated receptor may convert 10 GDP-associated proteins to active form. Those 10 GDP-associated proteins may activate 100 adenylate cyclase enzymes. Those 100 adenylate cyclase enzymes may convert 1,000 ATPs into 1,000 cyclic AMPs. Those 1,000 cyclic AMPs may activate 10,000 inactive proteins. 
Those 10,000 activated kinases may phosphorylate and activate 100,000 active enzymes. Those 100,000 active enzymes may create, may catalyze the reaction of 1 million products. And those 1 million products can increase a physiological response 1 million fold. And so this is how the action of one hormone can be amplified numerous times to get a large, fast, and strong physiological response. And so that was the first point I wanted to make. And that's amplification. These pathways are very important in that they amplify a signal. So amplification. We never named the GDP or the GTP associated protein. This protein has a very simple name. It's just called the G protein. And now that we know that this is a G protein associated with the receptor, we can give the receptor a more specific name. The receptor is called a G protein coupled receptor. So we can indicate that here. A G protein coupled receptor. Now there's one other point that I want to make about receptor associated hormone action. Uh, for example, let's say you want to increase uh, let's say the physiological response is an increase in blood calcium. So the hormone is going to take calcium from the bone and put it in the blood. So let's say you've done this, you have enough calcium in the blood. Now you want to stop that hormone action. You don't want it to continue because if you do, you'll take too much calcium away from your bone. And so what mechanisms are in place to stop the action of this hormone? So we have two messengers. We have a first messenger and a second messenger. And so we need to get rid of both of them. So the first thing you're going to do is get rid of the first messenger. And so as the hormone travels through the blood, the liver is going to be the primary organ for getting rid of, getting rid of this hormone or clearing the hormone from circulation. So the first thing you will do is get rid of the first messenger, the hormone. If the liver can get rid of the first messenger, or the cell itself can engulf the hormone and then destroy it. Now, as for the second messenger. So our second messenger is cyclic AMP. The target cell has mechanisms in place to get rid of the cyclic AMP. And so what happens, the cyclic AMP is converted into AMP. And the hormone responsible for this is phosphodiesterase. PDE. Phosphodiesterase. Phosphodiesterase. That's a pretty long name. A pathway in which the signal is transferred from the outside to the inside it's sometimes called a signal transduction pathway because the signal is transduced from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. So let's indicate that term here. Because in this pathway the elements are amplified, we can also refer to this as a signal transduction cascade. When you get to blood clotting, you'll see another cascade when all the elements are amplified to make the response fast and strong. And the word cascade implies that there's amplification. So we'll put here, amplification. And so these are all the elements of the signal transduction pathway involving adenylate cyclase. Now let's identify the hormones that utilize this pathway. You're going to have ACTH, adrenal corticotropic hormone. We're going to have FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. We're going to have LH, luteinizing hormone. We're going to have parathyroid hormone. We're going to have a hormone that we haven't talked about. Glucagon. So I'm going to indicate that one with a different color. We're going to have calcitonin. And we're going to have the catecholamines. Now I've indicated the catecholamines with a different color because they're also going to be, they also use the next pathway, the phospholipase pathway. So catecholamines can use both. And there are two catecholamines. Epinephrine and noepinephrine. And so these are the hormones which utilize the adenylate cyclase pathway to exert their effect on target cells. Adrenal corticotropic hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, parathyroid hormone, glucagon, calcitonin, and the calcolinings, epinephrine, and noepinephrine. And so this concludes this lecture on the adenylate cyclase pathway. Hope that you learned a lot.